Hello friends and welcome to CT Pages yet again. My name is Kim. I'm the Children and Young Adult Consultant with the Connecticut State Library. I'm here with the Windsor Public Library to tell us about their teen intern program where they found a way to use state funds to do something cooler than maybe initially what the money was planned for. I think teen interns are cool. So thank you guys. I'm here for it. We don't do a ton of teen specific CT Pages. So this is like really a treat actually. Thank you guys. <laughs> Thanks, Kim. Um, hi, folks. My name is Gabby Barnes. I am the branch manager at the Wilson Branch Library, and I'm joined with my colleague. Hi, I'm Kaylee Klassen. I'm at the main library. Um, so our program is called Librarians in Training, <laughs> um, which is an acronym, L-I-T, and it's kind of a play on both the slang, like it's lit, <laughs> and lit being literature. <laughs> Uh, so the program itself is designed to provide high school students from historically excluded and underrepresented groups the opportunity to develop their skills in the field of librarianship, um, as well as gain professional experience and benefit from a mentoring program in a public library setting. Um, so the goal of this project was to increase the number of librarians who reflect the diversity of, you know, the U.S. population um, and foster growth and development of new librarians by providing practical experiential learning critical for success in, in our profession, right? Um, so the idea itself, like where it came from is, it came from two different places. The first is, um, you know, after COVID, well, I shouldn't say after COVID because we're still in COVID, but um, <laughs> uh, once we were like pulling ourselves out of the throngs of um, COVID, uh, we saw a sharp decline in our teen population in Windsor, um, and we reached out to some other libraries uh, in the state and across the region, and um, we weren't alone. You know, a lot of libraries saw a decline in, in their teens. Um, and so we kind of use this as an opportunity to reconsider, like, what sort of opportunities we were um, creating for our young people to engage with the library and trying to expand those thinking beyond uh, like clubs and one-shot programs. Um, so many of us, myself included, came into the library world as uh, teenagers, some of us working as pages where we were shelving books, um, or some of us just have fond memories of like watching someone we know rise up through the ranks from a teen page position to, you know, wherever they are now. Um, but over the years with budget cuts and things, so many libraries were forced to eliminate the page position, um, tighten up their staffing, kind of roll on a more like lean, um, a lean crew. And so we've kind of lost that pathway for our high school students from that page position into um, higher, higher roles in the library. So that's, that's like one sort of like way we were thinking about this. And then the other, um, our town, the town of Windsor has embarked on um, its own uh, EDI initiative. Um, you know, we're trying to increase initiatives focus on equity, diversity, access and inclusion. Um, and so thinking about opening up an opportunity for young people who are specifically from historically excluded and underrepresented backgrounds was one way that we could tie into um, into that work that our town was doing. Um, and also it serves as a means of addressing um, kind of that like larger overarching looming problem in the field of librarianship, which is, you know, trying to diversify our recruitment efforts. So <laughs> um, yeah, so that's where that idea came from. And then um, in terms of how we went about creating it in, um, 2020, so we have a middle managers work group that gets together on a quarterly basis, and we uh, started working on a feasibility study for what at the time we were just calling a summer youth program. Um, we were thinking that we would offer like a short summer internship to maybe one or two high school students, and um, the focus of the feasibility study that we were doing was, uh, you know, identifying grant opportunities, um, figuring out the training needs of the students that we were going to bring in, um, what they were going to do during their time, what impact them being in the building would have on other staff, um, and how we would, you know, advertise and recruit for these positions. So um, 
there were several of us working on it. I'll speak from my particular perspective. Um, I reached out to a friend who was working in the academic library world uh, to find out how they went about creating fellowships specifically for EDI librarians um, or EDI focused fellowships. Um, and I asked, you know, what do those job descriptions look like? What does the language look like? How are they framing this? Um, and then I also reached out here in town to the coordinator of the Youth Services Bureau because um, she had done recruitments for her teen summer program um, for, you know, a ton of years. So finding out from her, like locally, what does recruitment look like? And then we started actually looking into uh, some federal grants like the Laura Bush 21st Century Librarians Grant. Um, we were looking into some state funding like the LSTA opportunities from the Connecticut State Library, but we were actually pretty surprised um, where our funding actually came from and how it presented itself to us. Um, so every year in Windsor, along with many other libraries in the state, we get funds from the State Library for participating in the Borrow It program. Um, this is the program that allows our patrons to borrow and return items from any library in the state. Um, and then the state's deliver it system and our particular consortium, LCI, deliver uh, those borrowed materials, you know, back and forth between their home libraries. Um, so in 2021, uh, we actually, let me back up. In 2020, we opened our doors in Windsor uh, in June of 2020, which was well in advance of, I think, maybe a lot of other libraries. And uh, we did see a huge spike in um, participation from patrons from all over the state um, whose library, home libraries were closed. And so in 2021, when we received our funds from the Borrow It program, we got nearly three times what we usually do. Um, and so that was exciting. Uh, normally we use this funding to, you know, purchase materials and purchase supplies. Um, but with this excess of, of funding, we took the opportunity to create this internship. Um, and we knew that it had the potential to open up the doors of librarianship to young people who might not otherwise have had the opportunity to experience it. So that was super exciting. Um, I'm going to now turn it over to Kaylee, who has taken on uh, a lot of the logistics and sort of the um, management and administration of the position since it started. So Kaylee, take it away. Yeah. Um, so like Gabby was saying, um, a lot of the groundwork, like all of the groundwork for this had been laid. Um, before I even came on board here um, with Windsor. So I was um, tasked with like finding um, some candidates and that's been um, a great uh, opportunity to talk with folks over at the high school. Um, I talked to some guidance counselors there, the librarian there um, to see if we could reach out through their avenues um, to post the job and just having them kind of like maybe funnel a good, like candidates, kids that they think would be good for the um, the internship. Um, and I was actually pretty overwhelmed with the response. We got, I think like over 20 to apply. Um, and we were uh, able to be a bit, um, not rigorous, but you know, we were, um, what we really wanted was just a, like a statement. We didn't even expect them to have like a resume because these are high school kids at this point. Um, this might be their first actual paid opportunity. Um, and that's another cool thing that we could actually pay for um, their work. Um, so we asked for um, just a personal statement, a cover letter. Um, we got a lot of beautiful resumes and cover letters. So it was really tough to, to go through all of them and um and pick ones for, for to bring in for interviews i think we interviewed about 10. um and originally we were um, planning on hiring two interns um to work at the main library and at the our branch um and due to some like scheduling things it wound up that we just went with with our one intern um but it's been um great having the intern here. I think the response from um, staff and the community has been really positive, um, especially with this being our first go around doing this. Um, it's a learning opportunity uh, for us, I think, um, because we 
are finding like, how do we give them meaningful work? Um, I think a lot of the work that we do in libraries, no matter how small it is, is meaningful, but we're really trying to think of like big picture, big idea projects um, for our intern. Um, so it's been like, I think Gabby has said once we are, what is the phrase building the ship as we are sailing or something so um so it's been really it's been a learning opportunity for us as well as for our intern um i mean this is really an opportunity for them to see what it's like to work out in the real world and just some of those expectations that we have um while also keeping in mind on our end like they are in high school um and how we kind of strike that balance of what you know what's um something that they can actually take on um while they're also you know like have taken classes and homework and applying for college and you know balancing all that um so yeah I, I, but i think like for our first year doing it um it's been pretty successful um and i think that there's interest for it to continue um certainly from uh applicants that have applied that are eligible to apply again and also just from um, like members out in the community staff at the high school parents have come up to me and said that they think this is a wonderful thing um, and like Gabby was saying like engagement with teens has sort of declined and so the teens that are coming to the libraries I think are really coming because they want to build their skill set and you know many of them have to you know get so many volunteer hours or just get sort of some kind of real world experience. And I think that this is a great draw for them to come in and, and kind of get those experiences here. Wow. <laughs> I, wow. So, okay. I think my first question is, and it, I, I imagine it changes week from week because you are working with a student, but you know, about how much time like about how many hours a week does your intern work and how long is this internship? Is it like one full year? Is it just the school year? Like what are sort of those logistics? It's 33 weeks. Um, and I would say our, Isabel works about nine hours a week. Is that right, Gabby? You know, <laughs> she's two or She's six here, so it's got to be. Yeah, so she's she. It's nine hours a week. She works six hours at the branch and then three hours here. Um, so she kind of gets exposure to both locations, which is something that um, we weren't in original. We were hoping that um, both interns would have time at each building, um, but it's it's been good that she gets to see both um, the way both places operate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it, it sounds like y'all had the idea for this program, which is a really great program, by the way. I really think that everybody needs to, to sit down and sort of look at the resources that they have in the unique ways that you all did. But it sounds like you came up with the idea for some sort of lit teen, I love that, uh, mm -hmm. program before you, before you identified this particular funding source um, to do it. Like it sort of seemed like there was like a serendipitous sort of situation, but also you really, um, you really seem to have investigated your resources, right? So you looked at resources that existed not only on a state level, but on a federal level. So I'm wondering just sort of, I'm, one of the things that we like to do with CT Pages is we try to identify the scalability of something like this. So perhaps a smaller library with maybe less people, less resources can, can find a way to sort of scale these various programs that might be appropriate for them. So maybe like, what was that process like? Um, you know, did you, I, you said you have quarterly meetings, which is also really great. Um, is that something that you sort of just did sporadically throughout the year researching ways to um, finance a program like this? Or did you really kind of go in and hone in a bunch of your time? Does that make sense? I, I just, I really want people to realize that sometimes we have to sort of look beyond our blinders a little bit to sort of yeah. find and, but I know that capacity is hard. For sure. So um, that's a great question. I think we we went into it saying, you know, we want to find an opportunity for young people to engage at what scale is going to depend on what funding we can secure. And so that's where we looked at LSTA and Laura Bush, right? If we had gone with an LSTA grant, we could have done um, 
we could have done a multi-year uh, review, right, with the planning and then the actually the implementation. And so that would have been one way to go about it with Laura Bush. The scale would have had to be a little bit larger, right, because the requirements of that are that there's like a broader impact on the field at large. Um, and I think the timeline on that is like several years anyway. So we were really like, we have this idea, how we bring it together is really going to depend on how we can fund it. So I don't know if that is helpful to anyone. That, well, that is helpful because I think there's something to be said for, for having an idea and having a goal, but also accepting that the goal and the idea might have to fluctuate a little bit sort of based upon the outside forces that you only have so much control over. So no, that makes, that makes perfect sense. Um, I will say though, planning for what the intern will do, not knowing how long you may have them um, working with you is, I think was the hardest part um, because, you know, a 10 week summer program is way different than a 33 week academic program or even a 52 week full year, you know? So yeah. that um, that was also part of our planning of, you know, depending on our, our structure of time, it's gonna largely change how we're even implementing the work that this young person is doing. What's it been like to the best of your understanding for this young teen intern, for the library with this with this intern, which you said is something that you sort of thought about in your um, feasibility study, which is really great, by the way. I think y'all should publish some of this stuff. That's just me. Do what you want, but I would read it. Um, and uh, has the community at large noticed and sort of have you noticed the community noticing and kind of having any thoughts about this? Um, well, certainly when we were um, advertising for the position, there was a lot of, um, buzz in the community. Um, and I think um, as far as like internally with staff, everyone was like, oh, great, like they can help with this or they can, I need an extra set of hands for this. Um, so there's a lot of, um, you know, directions that this intern could get pulled into. Um, but I think we were trying to, Gabby and I like think of bigger goals. Um, not to say that this, our intern hasn't helped with like the day-to-day -day tasks, they certainly have. Um, and, you know, I, from outside, I mean, this is our first year doing it. Um, so we're hoping that it will grow. Um, and I, I mean, it, again, it all sort of depends on, on funding, um, but if it can grow, um, I think maybe having more than one um, intern, I don't, We'll see, but um, I don't know. I can see it getting a little competitive <laughs> at the for for um, the high school kids that are applying. Um, I don't know, Gabby. Did you want to add anything about community? Um, no, I think you you summed it up well. I really love this idea. And I, and just sort of as the children and youth consultant, my brain is, is sort of going like, huh, what, you know, what can we do that's sort of teen specific to uplift this program? I don't know what that is. But just so you know, my brain is now thinking about this because I have no idea. Have y'all talked to any other, um, even if it's just sort of informally, uh, just other librarians about this. I think you said you'd reached out to some folks in the beginning of, of this thought process to see what it was like for other librarians and library workers with regards to teens and their community. I know it's still early, so I'm sure there's there's still a, a lot that's still happening, but have y'all had any conversations with other teen librarians or admin at libraries about this project and how it's going? Because I can I can see I can see an initiative like the spreading, right? I can I can almost envision y'all is sort of like a, a pilot for something like this and, and others learning from you and doing some of the extensive work that y'all did to find funding sources. Um, but like you were saying, Gabby, we as a profession, what, what do we do to get you know different types of people in libraries? We need to get different types of people in libraries. And a, at a lot of time, it's a conversation. It's so lovely to see to see someone thinking about the longevity of that, not just starting in colleges maybe and trying to convince people like, if you, do you wanna get a master's? <laughs> do, you, do you wanna work in libraries, right? 
Um, you know, but you're thinking about the the youth use, the, the people who society is, is sort of beginning to say like, no, what do you want to do for the rest of your life? Which is a horrible thing to ask a 17 or 18 year old, but to give them actual hands-on experience working in a community-based field, a field that, you know, we say that we exist to be equalizers of communities and we say that we are people first, right? And sort of book second at this point, you know, y'all have really tapped into the people kind of at the beginning of their grown-up journey and the world needs to know. And I'm just wondering if you've had any conversations with other people. Um, so I'm going to address two things that came up as you were talking. The first is um, I entered the role or the field of librarianship at 19, um, not knowing what I wanted to do. I had, you know, decided to take time off from going straight from high school to college because I wasn't ready to answer the question of what do you want to do for the rest of your life. Um, and working in a library convinced me that I wanted to do that for the rest of my life, right? So I kind of had this, this like lived experience of this is the point that we catch people. Um, and so that's why, you know, even, you know, even in a conversation with our town manager who, you know, supported this project from the beginning, um, but just to make sure, you know, he likes to ask us questions to um, kind of push our thinking and just to make sure we really meant what we were um, saying, he asked, you know, why not 18 to 24 year olds? And I shared with him that same, that same um, sentiment of, you know, by that point, some folks in that age group have already made up their mind. They've already picked a major. They're, you know, on their way. Um, not all, but some. Uh, and so, catching folks at this early stage, at this transformative period of, you know, being kicked out of the nest into the real world. It's like, hey, fall into the nest of libraries. Um, in terms of conversations, uh, I didn't have, I didn't have conversations necessarily with anyone about this particular program. Um, I did do an, a teen internship program when I was at the Hartford Public Library. We were fortunate enough to um, have a, a lot of teen interns every summer from the Summer Youth Employment Program run through um, the city. And uh, so I had experience of sort of what the program would feel like and, and like what the management would feel like and kind of, um, you know, the, the actual like nitty gritty of it. Um, but, well, I guess, and that's another thing I just want to mention is for folks who maybe are like, I don't have, I don't have the funds or I'm not sure how to finance um, a young person. If you're able to serve as a site through the Summer Youth Employment Program, I think Bloomfield did that last year. Um, that's a fantastic way to have a young person come into your space and for the um, financial burden to be not on your your uh, budget. Um, Kaylee, did you talk to anyone about the program? Um, no, I, I'm sorry to say I didn't. Um, I have a lot of years of experience um, managing teen volunteers. Um, I've always sort of been in youth services. Um, so I know what that's like to, to work with teens, um, but that was always as a in the volunteer capacity, um, not in, in a, any sort of paid role. Um, but no, I didn't. I don't think I had any conversations with any folks in um, in Connecticut about about the internship. I should though. <laughs> you know what? I foresee. I I hope someone sends you guys an email once we once we post this and sort of share this out in CT pages, and that's fine, right? I mean, you're still, as you said, you're. I I always go the other way. I say uh, building the plane as you're flying it, but you're building you're building the ship as you're sailing it. So I think that's completely fine. And and then you know to sort of be in a position to start these conversations and sort of share what you've done and what you've accomplished with this program with others. I think it's going to be a really great treat for the listeners of, of that. And I guess with that, sort of my last question is, I know that isn't funding always a question, but, you know, what do y'all envision for this program going forward? Do you anticipate, um, 
you know, maybe seeing if you can get two interns on maybe a shorter time frame, or, or do you anticipate maybe changing the way you went about soliciting um, the the interns? Any anything really? I'm just sort of interested to see if you've had any thoughts about what this program could look like going forward. Um. So. We kind of committed, Kaylee and I committed to uh, at the end of the program when, you know, we close the door and say, you know, wave goodbye to uh, Isabel on her way to college, uh, that we would sit down and sort of do a debrief of, you know, what went well, what would we change. That would be informed by conversations we have with our intern, um, hearing uh, her perspective on, you know, what worked and what didn't, which is going to take a lot of finessing because it can be challenging to get teenagers to be critical in, to your face. But I don't know. Our intern is actually, she's awesome. And like, yeah, she's, just, yeah, she's great. <laughs> so I, it might not be actually that hard with, um, with her. But uh, yeah, the plan is for us to get to the end and then assess um, and figure out maybe what we want to do differently. Um, I think at least in my opinion, um, and Kaylee can <laughs> Kaylee can disagree. Uh, I think how we went about most of what we're doing was really like thoughtful and could be done again. I think the part that we may consider changing is probably like timeline, uh, task delegation, you know, scheduling stuff like that. But Kaylee, what about what do you think? Yeah, no, I agree. I think the the process of of you know, recruitment and onboarding um, was all pretty smooth. Um, and yeah, I agree with um, being thoughtful about like um, what tasks we're, we're giving them and also like keeping in mind, um, one thing moving forward, like keeping in mind their, their schedule um, and what to expect like, you know, over like holiday breaks and things like that. Like, are they going to con continue to come into work during that time? Or are they going to like say like, I, I need a break, you know, like working those things out. Um, and we are asking Isabel as she is coming in to like keep a journal and like, a, you know, kind of keep um, her thoughts and ideas of how things are going like this whole entire time. So, you know, we're asking her to, to really reflect and, and like Gabby said, like, she and I are going to take time to have a conversation and, and debrief. Um, so, yeah. That's great. I love that you're you're adding your your team and sort of doing some co-design and co-collaboration and sort of figuring out what the next year and future years can look like. So, yeah, yeah, she, she's great. very mature. So it's it's very easy, like working with her in that in that way. Yeah. Yeah, we have her actually, um, this is something that I, I pulled from grad school and I just, I loved it. I thought it was such a good exercise for like overachievers and perfectionists. Um, our professor had us, the whole class we were designed to fail. And so every step of the way we had to keep track of our failures. And then at the end of the, um, at the end of the semester, we presented our failure portfolios. And so that's what we've um, sort of asked Isabel to do is keep track of you know, those sort of tough moments and um, thing, anything she would consider a failure so that, um, yeah, so she's got the ammo when we ask her, like, what could we do better? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Man, I, good on you for going through a class like that. That might have been the end for me. I might have been like, get me my box. I'm gonna go live here in my parents' backyard. That's, that's really <laughs> great. But uh, again, like, I think that that's really going to help to set y'all up for success. I think you're right that you you did great work in the prep of this. Like I feel like you were really incredibly thorough, um, and I'm so, I'm so I'm so impressed. I mean, especially to do that during a time of COVID when all of our sort of mental brains were weird, like Jello. Um, you know, for for you both to just even find sort of like the mental space and energy to embark on something like this is incredibly commendable. And the it was cathartic. Well, thank you. Was it? It was. Yeah. To think about the future, to think about a young person and think about like enhancing their future by offering them an opportunity, like was, it was an exercise in moving outside of yourself, you know, and not being so like, woe is me. The world is coming to an end. It's like, no, here is the future you're preparing the soil for them. So 
get out of your own head. <laughs> wow. I, I love that. And what a, that's it. We're going to end right there. That, that was beautiful. That was amazing. And I, I, man, I wish I was helping y'all during that. Um, because I, I think you're right. I think there is some catharsis in looking to the positivities of the future instead of sort of drowning in the present that we were all sitting in during that time. So thank you both. And I'm really excited to see where this, where this goes, because I think there is an absolute need here and I'm, I'm, I'm excited well, to see you. it. Thank, thank you. Thank yeah, you both for your time. Spreading the word about this. Whatever I got to do, whatever yeah. I got to do, this, <laughs> this project might might extend beyond the state of Connecticut. Other folks might hear about this. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> thank you both. Thank you. Thank you.